Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to worship uh, this Sunday, February the 7th at St. Andrew's Ancaster. Uh, if you're new to us, uh, my name is John Reed. I'm the minister of St. Andrew's, and uh, I, I extend a welcome to, uh, to all of you, whether you're, again, new to us, worshiping with us for the first time today online, or uh, a longtime member of our St. Andrew's family. Uh, in times like this, it, it's good to be able to connect with one another and, and, and with our God in worship. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to look at it, uh, today's worship theme is introduced through our, our family worship video, uh, which you can find on the St. Andrew's website, or if you're a member of the congregation, you would have got it in your email. Today's theme is Jesus welcomes everyone, and in, in his name I welcome you all here today. Let's uh, come to God this morning with our call to worship, which comes from Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, Bless his holy name. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse nor keep his anger forever. He doesn't deal with us according to our sins nor repays us according to our iniquities. As the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love for those who fear and honor him. As far as the east is from the west so far, he removes our sins from us. And as a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who honor him. Let's, uh, let's come to our God who loves us in prayer this morning. Gracious God, loving Father, we thank you uh, for this new day. We thank you for the sun, the brightness on the freshly fallen snow. And these things and other signs, we are reminded of your constant goodness to us, even in challenging times like these. We thank you that you welcome us here today by your Spirit and through your Son, Jesus, that we can join with your people, truly be a part of your family here as uh, you continue to bring your goodness and blessing to the world. And so it's all that we can do to praise and bless your name today. As we come, we acknowledge, we acknowledge, Lord, that we our sinners, that we have missed the mark for, for our lives and for your purpose for the world, that we have stumbled and we have brought harm to ourselves, to others, and to this world that you created us to care for. Lord, help us to turn to you now, to be changed in our hearts and minds, and we do come asking your forgiveness, knowing that you give it generously and willingly, indeed that you welcome all who recognize their need for you and you welcome them all through your Son, Jesus. It's in his name that we pray. Amen.
All right, we turn to God's Word in the Bible today. Uh, we're, our primary focus is on the story of uh, Jesus calling Levi in the Gospel of Luke. Uh, but in the, the version of that story that's told uh, in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus quotes uh, the prophet Hosea. Uh, and we're going to turn to that, uh, that selection from Hosea to, uh, uh, as we look to God's Word today. Hosea 6, verses 1 to 6. A call for God's people to turn back to him. The prophet Hosea says, Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us, but he will also heal us. He has injured us, but he will bind up our wounds. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will restore us, that we may live in his presence. Let us acknowledge the, no the Lord, and let us press on to acknowledge him. As surely as the sun rises, he will appear. He will come to us like winter rains. He will come to us like spring rains that water the earth. What can I do with you, Ephraim? What can I do with you, Judah, says the Lord? Your love is like the morning mist, like the early dew that disappears. Therefore, I cut you in pieces with my prophets. I killed you with the words of my mouth. Then my judgments go forth like the sun. For I desire mercy not sacrifice, the acknowledgement of God rather than burnt offerings. And we turn to our next story uh, from the Gospel of Luke as it comes to us in Luke chapter 5, verses 27 to 39. After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi sitting at his tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him. And Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. Then Levi held a great banquet for Jesus at his house, and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with them. But the Pharisees and teachers of the law who belonged to their sect complained to Jesus' disciples, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Well, they said to him, John's disciples often fast and pray, and so do the disciples of the Pharisees. But yours go on eating and drinking. Jesus said, Can you make the friends of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, and then they will fast. He told them this parable. No one tears a piece out of a new garment to patch on an old one. Otherwise, will they, they will have torn the new garment, and the patch from the new will not match the old. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins. The wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. And no one, after drinking old wine, wants the new, for they say the old is better. This is the word of the Lord, and thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word that has come to us through prophets, through your apostles, those who have followed your way and uh, who have learned of their need for you. Lord, may we turn to you, confess our need for you, and be prepared to listen for what your word has to say to us this day. And indeed, may we come away changed. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, after a long January, we got news of change just this past week. For many of us, it's mostly good news. Uh, it also brings some apprehension. Schools are reopening in person uh, for, learn for in-person learning here in Hamilton and most of southern Ontario on Monday. And for parents like Elaine and I, uh, who have no health conditions and whose kids are, are healthy, that's mostly a relief. Online learning was uh, definitely a challenge uh, for the kids and, and for us as well as we tried to, to figure it out together, work and keep the house somewhat together over the past month. Uh, we could also see the toll that the isolation was having on the kids and, and on their ability to learn. As, recently, as I recently said on one of our family worship videos, uh, my hat's off to all of you who have all of you families and teachers who have been doing online learning uh, since September. 
and to those who will continue to do so uh, on Monday. But even as, as it's a relief, as I said, it, it does bring some apprehension as well. Uh, as we also get the news that some other things will be starting to open up in the next week or two. This too will be a, a relief uh, to many business owners, workers, and many who just need some sign of progress. The pandemic situation is, yes, better than it was four or even just two weeks ago, but we're still a long way from having this thing fully under control again. My hope and prayer is that we don't go too far too quickly and lose the progress uh, that came from the last month and a half of hard work uh, and sacrifice. We need to not relax. Uh, there's still, uh, still a long way ahead of us. Uh, indeed, as much as we would like this pandemic to be over, as much as I know I desperately, desperately want this to be over, to quote Winston Churchill, a quote I've probably used bef before in this pandemic, this isn't the end or even the beginning of the end. It is perhaps the end of the beginning. While vaccinations continue to ramp up, we need to stay vigilant and restrain ourselves so that we don't delay the day we're all waiting for or make this pandemic even more costly than it's been already. Because what we're all really waiting for is not just for stores to open or even something as essential as being able to get back to work, but for a return to a full, rich life where we can gather with people again without worry or fear. We're longing to have the kind of celebration that we see in our story from the Gospel of Luke today, either as a host or as guests. Now, the reality is that we're still a long way from that, especially if we want to have it inside around our kitchen or dining room table with food and drink. We're likely looking at the fall or this time next year, hopefully not longer. But as an exercise in hope, I want to start today by asking who you would want to invite to come to your home and sit around your table on that day. Or to take it from another angle, whose house and whose table would you like to be at? Where would you like to be welcomed when we can celebrate again? Let's pause and think about that for a moment. All right, then let, to take us a little bit further into our gospel story for the day, let me also ask you an opposite set of questions. Who would not be welcome in your house or at your table? And where do you think you would not be welcome? Who would not want you at their table. I realize that I'm probably giving you a bit of emotional whiplash by asking these questions back to back. But, but that is something that we definitely get from the gospel today. It begins with this simple and beautiful scene of Jesus walking up to a tax collector named Levi, or Matthew as he's called in the gospel of the same name inviting him to join Jesus and the new world that God is making. And then Levi, in his joy, throws a huge party for Jesus at his house and invites the whole neighborhood. But then we're pulled out of this celebration by the criticism, complaints, and condemnation. Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Now, this comes across pretty harsh in, uh, in most modern Western contexts, most of us here today. But it would, it would not have come as quite as much of a bait and switch uh, for the people who first heard this story, especially if they were ordinary people in one of the provinces of the Roman Empire. As much as, as taxes are never popular, it's one thing to be taxed by a democratic government made up of people from your own country, your own community, uh, for things that you at least see some visible benefit from. Roads, schools, emergency services, health care. It's a very different thing to be taxed by a foreign empire who keeps your country under control by threat of military force for a colonial government thousands of miles away in a different country with little obvious benefit other than the peace and security 
offered by the occupying army and trade opportunities for people who are already rich. The other thing that helps to know is that taxation in the Roman Empire wasn't run directly by the government. It was actually farmed out to the private sector in something resembling a cross between a pyramid scheme and a protection racket. The Roman governor would send out annual tax contracts to the highest bidders. People would bid on tax contracts and they would then sell it down line to other more well-to-do business people who would then contract uh, smaller local business people in every community to do the actual tax collection with everyone from the bottom on up adding on a commission so that they can make a profit. So say the em emperor wanted $1 million annually from a place like Galilee. And the contracts say get split between 10 millionaires who each sell their shares to 10 other business people who contract the collecting out to 10 local guys. If each adds just 10% commission, suddenly everyone is paying a third more tax just to run the racket. And there would be plenty up and down the chain adding a lot more than just 10%. I think you can see now why tax collectors were so hated in Jesus' day. Not only were you a collaborator with the occupying empire, and not only were you ritually contaminated by your constant contact with pagan foreigners, but you were making your living at the expense of your neighbors, even if you weren't especially greedy in the cut you were taking for yourself. Local tax collectors like Levi weren't especially rich in the big picture of things, unless they were particularly shameless. But it made them better off than many, if not most, of their neighbors, and they were a part of something that everyone hated. So you can understand why the decent people started grumbling. And they grumbled even more when they saw the other kinds of people who played fast and loose with the standards taught by the religious authorities in both their work and their personal lives. Matthew, uh, Levi is a tax collector. All his other friends are tax collectors and the other kind of people that don't belong in polite society. Yet these are the kind of people Jesus not only accepts invitations from, but actually sought out to be an active part of the renewal movement he was leading. Follow me. Join God's kingdom, Jesus said to Levi and other people like him, both women and men. Yet these aren't the, the only dubious characters we find uh, in the gospel that Jesus invites to the party. Luke and the other gospels tell us that Jesus recruited people from the other, complete other end of the spectrum as well. And like Levi, they also made it into the inner circle. The list of the 12, Jesus' closest followers, includes a guy named Simeon Zelotes, which, depending on how you translate it, is Simon the Zealous or Simon the Zealot. Either way, uh, he, was what we, he was either what we would call a hardcore fundamentalist, someone who might think the Pharisees and religious experts were completely right, and perhaps even a little soft. Or, just as likely, he was an extremist who supported uh, a religious revolution against the Romans. It would have been interesting to see how he and Levi got along when Jesus first, uh, first recruited them, a conspirator and an extremist in the same group. So what on earth do people like, again, Levi the tax collector and Simon the zealot have in common? Well, Jesus answered, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. The only requirement to join Jesus' party is the recognition that you need a doctor, that somehow you've missed the mark, whether to the left or to the right, or you've gone too high or too low, that you are a part of the world's problems rather than the one who has all the answers, and that you need healing and transformation. Jesus welcomes everyone. But to accept that welcome, you or I, 
real, need to realize and accept that we have a deep need in our lives that we cannot meet ourselves and that Jesus has something to offer us that we cannot get anywhere else. Or to put it in a term that goes over probably about as poorly today as it did in Jesus' day, we need to recognize that we ourselves, you and I, are sinners. All of us. No exceptions. And that's where people like Levi actually have an advantage in God's kingdom. Jesus said uh, on several occasions, the last will be first and the first will be last. When you're the person uh, who makes your living by working for the enemy and your business gets you hated by everyone in your hometown, even if you're doing okay financially, that's not a great place to be. Maybe you don't have a lot of great options. Maybe it was this or dismal but honest work that wouldn't put enough food on the table for your family. Maybe you just liked the idea of a better life but didn't think too much about the cost at the time. But either way, you know that when people call you a sinner, there's no self-justification that can help you escape. You know they're right. So when Jesus walks up and offers his invitation, when he says you're welcome in God's kingdom, in the new world God is making here, in God's family on earth and in heaven, you're ready to take that offer, to take Jesus in your house and throw him a party because you're so happy, so happy that he's welcomed you. You know you're sick, and there's no better sight than a doctor who not only wants to help you, but help you bring healing to everyone else who suffers under the same pandemic of sin that's keeping everyone down. It's actually a lot harder when you're like the Pharisees. When you think you're all right, or at least that you're doing better than most people, then if you're in that position, you're you're a lot less likely to find Jesus' offer of welcome exciting. It's easier to question and criticize and debate him than respond with enthusiasm. Some Pharisees did join Jesus, but often it took some tough medicine. Look up the story of the Pharisee who became known as the Apostle Paul, either in his own letters or in the book of Acts, to get a sense of of what it took to get some Pharisees to accept the invitation. The last shall be first, and the first shall be last. And what's so challenging is to remember the terms of your welcome. When, especially when you've been in the house with Jesus for a while, when you've been part of God's family for a while. It's easy to forget what it's like to be on the outside, to be consciously, visibly on the outside, especially if God has worked some major changes in your life, in some of your attitudes, in your lifestyle. That's the problem many of the Pharisees had. They were part of God's people, and they were committed to living the way God called his people to live but they forgot that they were sinners saved by God's kindness and generosity and that they had been welcomed not for any goodness of their own, but because God was kind to them. It's important to remember that when we are welcomed by the doctor, by the physician, becoming healthy isn't just about avoiding sickness and sin. It's about pursuing wellness and goodness for all. It's about pursuing those things that make for a truly abundant life as God sees it. Jesus welcomes everyone, and that means change. Remember that he says he has come to call sinners to repent. Uh, Repentance is just a word the Bible uses to mean change and transformation. But the change that he offers is one that doesn't separate us from others. It's a change that actually draws us to others the way that Jesus is drawn to others. The Apostle Paul, that zealous Pharisee who believed he was absolutely right until Jesus showed him just how much he was missing the mark and some of the things that matter the most, reflected on his experience and he gave this advice to the Christians living in Rome a couple decades after uh, 
Jesus walked up to Levi at the tax booth. Paul said, Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ welcomed you. So if you're listening this today as a Levi, knowing that you've missed the mark by a wide margin, or even as a Simon Zelotes, that you tried doing what was right and wound up hurting along the other ways, or you tried doing what was right and you realize after the fact that you went about it in the wrong way, know that Jesus welcomes everyone. Jesus welcomes you. There is nothing that you have done that disqualifies you from the celebration in God's house. You just have to say yes to the invitation and let the doctor begin to heal and transform you. And let me also say to those of you who have been a part of God's family, the church, and maybe you've stumbled, maybe you've fallen away, maybe you feel that you've gotten so far off track, there's no way you can come back. The welcome is always there. Jesus always comes to save sinners. He comes to welcome you too. And if you're listening today as someone who is already in the celebration, someone who's been in the celebration and and feels like you haven't put a foot wrong for a while, remember that you too need a doctor. I know I need a doctor. The church is a key part of of God's plan to heal the world, but it's also a hospital and rehabilitation center for sinners. None of us will be done our treatment before this life is over. I know there's times when I forget that, but then there's also plenty of times when I'm reminded of that, when I fail, when I miss the mark, when I try and do the right thing but do it in the wrong way, and other people get hurt. We need to heed the cautionary example uh, presented by the Pharisees when we read the Gospels. And remember the words of Paul, welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ welcomed you. We need to welcome others as Christ, as Jesus has welcomed us. This too is a journey to learn how to welcome people very different from ourselves, whose mistakes might be different from ours. Again, people can miss the mark to the left, to the right, by shooting too high, shooting too low. There's all kinds of ways as human beings to mess things up. And it's easy to judge people who make mistakes different than the mistakes that we're inclined to make. We need to remember that we're all, to to use that Christian language, Sinners saved by grace. Broken people saved by God's kindness. Welcomed. Welcomed into his kingdom where God celebrates and throws a party for each one of us. And as we we, uh, come out of worship today, whatever day that is, let's pause and reflect on who we would want to invite into our house and into and sit at our tables when this pandemic is over in light of this story from Luke today. Who might is there that you wouldn't normally want to have at your table? Who are is someone who needs who you who needs to know that there is a God who loves them, a God who wants them to be healed and made whole? Who is someone like that that you could invite to your house, to your table, when this is all over? Who might you welcome to your table? And who might I, because Lord knows I need to think about this, who might I invite to mine? Whenever that day comes, may we, all of us, follow the example of Levi, who joyfully, joyfully invited tax collectors sinners, and yes, even Pharisees too, to rejoice with him and the Jesus who found him and welcomed him and brought him into the embrace of God. May God give you peace and strength today. Amen. Thank you.
as we uh, come to the, the end of our, our time of worship together, let's, let's pray and give thanks to God for his goodness to us and pray for our needs and the needs of the world. Let's pray together. O Lord God Almighty, God of kindness, generosity, love, and tenderness, we thank you. We thank you that your welcome embraces us. Indeed, embraces all the world in spite of all our failures and all our troubles. You're always there, always ready to, to bring us in and help us to be part of your work in the world. And we pray for this world, this world that needs your healing, Lord Jesus, that needs newness of life, that needs a great physician. We are particularly mindful of that in this season of pandemic. Lord, we pray uh, for all the students uh, who are going back to school on Monday and for all those who will continue to learn at home. Keep them all safe and well and healthy. We pray for all the teachers uh, who are ready, who are going to be teaching in person, particularly those who are of more vulnerable age groups. Bless them, keep them safe and healthy. And we pray for all those, again, who will be continuing online. We pray for all those who are work, continue to work uh, in front line uh, in health care, whether that's in long-term care homes, hospitals, public health, people in frontline industries. And we pray for those uh, who are anxiously awaiting a chance to return to work or have their business run again so, as they worry about tomorrow. Lord, we pray for all of us through this time. May we continue to pull together and remember to continue to do what is right and what, bring, what keeps our neighbors safe. We pray for our community in this, wint in this winter time. Remember the least of those among us uh, who are, for whom the winter is always hard, those who are homeless, those who sh do not have adequate housing, uh, those who worry about a gas bill. Lord, may we continue to serve the least, remembering uh, for those of us who have, have more, th th those who have least among us actually come first in your kingdom and let us care for them, especially we who are your church. We pray uh, for our church community here of St. Andrews. We thank you for the way that we have been welcomed here, whether that was as children uh, born into this congregation, those welcomed uh, as they've come from other churches, or those coming to faith for the first time in this, in this family of faith. Lord, may we return that welcome to others. And if we're coming from another church family today and, and watching online, may, may we also extend welcome, whether that's in person, in time to come or, or right now in ways that are safe. Lord, may we welcome all in your name. Extend uh, the joyful good news of your kingdom. And Lord, now in the silence, we lift up to you those prayers which you've placed on our hearts, which we have not yet spoken. We pray all these things in and through the strong, sure, and compassionate name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And pray further as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, a few announcements before uh, we go today. I, in the email out to the church, I mentioned uh, there's a Zoom Bible study being organized out of uh, Knox Bimbrook and St. Paul's Carloop churches, our, our sister churches in this area. Uh, it meets on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. I think I forgot to mention the time last Sunday. Uh, and it will meet until April the 14th. Uh, most weeks will be led by uh, Reverend Nancy, Nancy Moster. Uh, but I'll be leading this upcoming uh, Wednesday, February the 10th. Uh, I'll the, be sending out the Zoom link for that again uh, with the recorded version of this service uh, this afternoon. And if you're, again, watching uh, online, not part of our church, uh, just send me, send me an email. 
Uh, all the details are on the church website. Um, it's a study on the Psalms, which I think are a wonderful resource in times like these. And for, our, for St. Andrew's folks, just a reminder that our annual meeting uh, has been delayed until April. We're working a way to get that ready for you. Uh, and uh, we'll have uh, that time of uh, reflection, celebration, and uh, preparation for whatever this year brings us uh, after Easter. So that's all for, uh, for today's service. May God's uh, blessing be on you. And let's, let's, let's uh, share that blessing together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and remain on each one of us both now and forever. Amen. All right, everyone, till we, uh, we meet again, however that is, take care, God bless, be well. Bye-bye.